So in the last video, we derived an expression for the Lie derivative of a vector field. And we're now going to look at some properties of that Lie derivative. So first of all, you can see that we can write the Lie derivative of the vector field y along the vector field x as the commutator of these vector fields. So it should come in no surprise that if we reverse the order of the vector fields, that is, we compute the Lie derivative of x along y, we get a minus sign because that just amounts to switching the two vectors inside the commutator. Another nice property of the Lie derivative is that we can actually replace the coordinate derivatives with covariant derivatives. As long as the torsion is zero, that is, the connection coefficients are symmetric. So remember that the covariant derivative of a vector can be written as the coordinate derivative of that vector plus the connection coefficient gamma nu mu alpha v alpha. So if we want to replace the coordinate derivative with the covariant derivative, we simply replace d mu, wherever it acts on the vector, with the covariant derivative acting on that vector minus connection coefficient acting on the vector. Okay, so let us now apply this replacement. So we have lx of y equals, and then we get x mu nabla mu y nu minus x mu gamma nu mu alpha y alpha minus y mu nabla mu x nu plus y mu gamma nu mu alpha x alpha. Now as you can see there are two terms that look just like before but the coordinate derivative now replaced by the covariant derivative. Now let's just do a quick replacement of dummy indices in the last term. So what used to be called alpha is now called mu and what used to be called mu is now called alpha and as you can see this puts these two terms into a very similar shape. So the only difference is the sign and that the indices on the gamma are switched around. But if your connection is torsion free, your connection coefficient will actually be symmetric in these indices. And this is of course the case for the levi civita connection or the levi civita covariant derivative. So in that case, these two terms actually cancel. And what we found is that we can write the Lie derivative simply by replacing the coordinate derivatives with covariant derivatives. Let's do that. And that's a very nice property because sometimes it might be easier to work with the covariant derivative and sometimes it might be easier to work with coordinate derivatives. And as long as they appear in this specific combination, so as long as they appear as the actual Lie derivative, you can just exchange them for each other. But you have to make sure to exchange them in all the terms. Now another property that I wanted to show concerns the commutator of the Lie derivative of vectors. So if you have, for example, the Lie derivative along x and the Lie derivative along y acting on a third vector c and you want to take the commutator of these two operations on c. You can of course, applying our rules from before, write this as x acting on the Lie derivative uh, along y on c, so that's a commutator yc minus y acting on the Lie derivative along y acting on the Lie derivative along x of c. Now let us exchange x and c in this term so that we get a plus sign because changing terms in a commutator obviously changes the sign and c and x change places. And now we recognize these two terms as being just cyclic permutations of each other. And there's actually only one permutation missing to give zero. That's the Jacobi identity. So maybe I should write this down real quick. So if you have the commutator of A with the commutator of B and C plus, and now you just do cyclic permutations. So you have B with C and A 
plus C with A and B, this gives zero. So we have two of these three terms already in our expression above. So the only one that's missing is the one that starts with C, so C, X, Y. So this is the same as minus commutator of C with commutator of X and Y. But this is nothing but plus the commutator of the commutator of X and Y and C. And this is nothing but the lead derivative along the commutator of X and Y of C. So you see that the commutator of two lead derivatives is equivalent to the lead derivative along the commutator of those vector fields. So that's also a property that comes up at times and that's good to keep in mind. And you now might ask about the lead derivative acting on other tensorial quantities. So we could generalize the notion of the push forward from the last video to general tensors. And that's a good and systematic way of going about it. But I don't want to do that here and we can choose a different path. But first, let me quickly mention the lead derivative of a scalar function, because that's actually very simple. So if you remember the previous video, we had these integral curves of our vector field x. And then we evaluated uh, the vector at the point x0. Then we moved along that integral curve for a distance epsilon, got to another point q, and we evaluated the vector there and then moved it back to x0 via the push forward. Because we couldn't compare vectors at different points because they belong to different tangent spaces. Scalar functions don't have this restriction. So if we have a scalar function f, we can evaluate it at x0, and we can also evaluate it at q. And we can simply define the lead derivative along x of that scalar function. And let's just again write it at the point x0 that we're going to drop later as the limit as epsilon goes to 0 of f of q minus f of x0 divided by epsilon. And now we do what we did in the last video. We take f of q and we realize that this is actually f of x0 plus epsilon times the vector x, which allows us to do a Taylor expansion. So this is nothing but f evaluated at x0 plus epsilon d mu f evaluated at x0 x mu evaluated at x0. And if we insert this in our definition of the lead derivative, we see that it's nothing but x mu evaluated at x0, d mu acting on f evaluated at x0. And again, people usually drop this argument x0. You can apply this at any point. It doesn't matter, so there's no reason to write it. And just write lxf equals x mu d mu f or simply the vector x acting on the function f. So the lead derivative of a scalar function along a vector x is nothing but the directional derivative of the scalar function in the direction of x. This is really not too complicated, but we're going to need this to derive the lead derivative of general tensorial quantities. And the first step will be to derive the lead derivative of a covector. So let's say we have, as before, a vector y and now in addition a covector w. And we're now going to require as an additional input that the lead derivative is both linear and obeys the Leibniz rule on tensor products, so that it's actually a derivation in the algebraic sense. This is a reasonable requirement and we absolutely need it for this quick derivation to work. So we can now act with the lead derivative along the vector field x on the contraction of w and y, w mu, y mu. So this is a scalar. So this should, of course, be equal to the directional derivative along x of this scalar, w mu, y mu. And we have two different kinds of derivatives acting on that scalar, and both should obey the Leibniz rule. So we can use that. 
on the left hand side we have lx of w mu this is what we want to compute we have no idea what this is multiplied by y mu plus w mu lx acting on y mu so this we know what this is this is just the lead derivative of the vector fields and we write just the components and leave out the basis elements and on the right hand side we have x nu d nu acting on w mu and then multiplied with y mu plus x nu d nu acting on y mu and multiplied with w mu now we can uh, evaluate the lead derivative of the vector field this is w mu x nu d nu y mu plus w mu y nu d nu x mu and you can now see that the first of these two terms actually appears on both sides so we can uh, scratch out these two terms then we just bring this expression to the other side and we have an expression for the lead derivative of the covector so what we get is lx w mu and it's still multiplied by y mu equals x nu d nu w mu y mu minus the underlined term now in this underlined term let me just exchange the dummy indices so what used to be mu is now nu what used to be nu is now mu doesn't change anything but we now have w nu d mu x nu and y mu and now you can see that there is y mu appearing in all terms and this y mu could be any general vector so this of course has to be true for any choice of y mu so we can just scratch it on both sides and what we're left with is the definition of the lead derivative of the covector w along the vector field x now this time this is uh, just a component of the result so you could uh, contract this with the appropriate basis to get the tensorial quantity but a lot of time you will actually want to work with the components but this is why there's still the free index mu appearing here and now for the sake of completeness, I just want to give you the lead derivative of a general P, Q tensor. Again, just in components notation. So we have Lx of a general tensor and it has mu1 to mu p as upper indices and mu1 to mu q as lower indices. And you always get this directional derivative term. So x alpha d alpha t and then mu1 to mu p and mu1 to mu q that's always there and then you get terms with a minus d alpha x mu1 where now the index on the x is replaced by one of the upper tensor indices and of course we then need to replace the upper tensor index with the alpha so we get mu2 to mu p here we get mu1 to mu q minus and you do this replacing all the upper indices until you arrive at d alpha x mu p t mu1 all the way to mu p minus 1 and then the last index is replaced by alpha and there you have mu1 to mu q and then you do a similar thing for the lower indices so you get plus d nu 1 x alpha now the index on the derivative operator gets replaced so the upper indices are just mu 1 to mu p and the lower indices we now replace mu 1 by alpha and we have mu 2 all the way up to mu q and then you do this replacing all the lower indices until you arrive at d nu q x alpha t mu 1 to mu p and mu 1 to mu 
q minus 1 and the last index replaced by alpha. And now you have a general formula that you can always apply. So I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon.